Hi, this is Michael Oral from MobileBurn.com, and this is the new third generation Apple iPad for Verizon Wireless. It features 4G LTE data connectivity and has a high resolution 9.7 inch Retina display. So on the left here we have Verizon's new iPad and on the right a Wi-Fi only model of the iPad 2 for comparison's sake. Big difference here even though they both sport 9.7 inch displays is that the resolution on the new model is 2048 pixels by 1536 pixels which is a, works out to be four times as many pixels as what we had on the iPad 2. Um, it's a much much better looking display. It's as bright, both displays are at maximum brightness right now with the same background. You can see they look very, very similar, but when you really get down to the nitty-gritty, you can see no scan lines or anything on the new display. It's a new retina display. Um, when you look on the one on the right here, it's just it's, it's not the same quality. It's definitely good. It's always been a fine display, and I think for most purposes when you're using the device, it doesn't really matter that much, but there's no arguing that the new iPad has a vastly superior display. If you take a look at the backs of the devices, you'll see they're even more similar than the front. Uh, same Apple logo, speakers in the same location, same basic tapered feel for everything. This device is thicker than the new iPad because of the LTE components and the larger battery for uh, supporting the display. It's 9.7 millimeters thick as opposed to about 9.3 millimeters for the older iPad 2 model. You'll also notice um, while the rest of the controls seem pretty much the same, the camera opening for the new higher resolution 5 megapixel camera on the new iPad is larger. Other than that, pretty much identical. Weight is also up in addition to the thickness due to the uh, component upgrades. See the new models weigh about 52 grams um, heavier than the older models for the same thing. So the new Wi-Fi model weighs about um, 652 grams. Um, the 4G connected version here is about 10 grams more, 662 grams, as opposed to the 601 grams for the Wi-Fi model and uh, maybe about 613 grams for the 3G connected version. I'll try to show you the thickness comparison here. You can see on the bottom here we have the new iPad. You can tell because of the uh, SIM card slot here for the 4G LTE SIM, the Wi-Fi model on top. And you can see that the newer model is a little bit thicker. They both share that same basic tapered design though. And for more comparisons and general size of the tablet, here's the iPad sitting next to a WebOS powered HP touchpad and you can see that the touchpad is quite a bit thicker than the iPad. Uh, touchpad never really had particularly sexy hardware. A more useful comparison might be showing the new iPad here next to a Motorola Zyboard 8.2, it's an 8.2 inch display, and of course Amazon's Kindle Fire with a 7 inch display. And here's all three of those tablets pulling up the MobileBurn homepage a quick comparison. I do have to mention that uh, the two devices on the right are both flash enabled so they're running flash ads in the background which slows them down a little bit. But clearly the iPad with its uh, new high-res display and quad-core graphics GPU um, definitely performs much better when it comes to browsing tasks in terms of just overall smoothness. That's uh, also partly due to the operating system as well. In spite of its large size, which should afford it a larger antenna, I found the 4G LTE speeds on the iPad to be very middle of the road. You see I managed to get 5 megabits per second down and only 0.1 up. Uh, by comparison, Motorola's Zyboard 8.2 pulled down uh, almost 9.5 and, and still had a relatively poor performance uplink uh, 200 kbits per second. This is a weak LTE signal area where I am, but I tested both devices a couple of times um, quickly one after the other to try to mitigate any kind of differences and this was routinely the result I got. Uh, the Zyboard has always been one of the better performers for LTE, but um, new iPad definitely comes somewhere middle of the road. Let's activate the camera here. Take a look at it. You can tap on anything to refocus. Shutter button takes the photo. It is a bit unwieldy though. This is a very big, heavy device to be pointing around for recording photographs or videos. You can go into the forward facing camera here. You can see me right there. Face tracking, you'll probably note. Know. 
can switch to video, record full 1080p video. Video is quite good uh, as long as you're not panning around a lot. If you're panning around, then um, you get the jello effect from the image stabilization and you also just get a bit of blurring. But um, for relatively static backgrounds, it looks quite nice. And again, you could refocus by tapping on something on the screen. Galleries right here. So we can play that clip back. Take a quick look at a couple applications I've pulled down that are theoretically optimized for this new high res retina display on the iPad. This is a Flipboard. It's a magazine style news reader. You can also pull Twitter and Facebook feeds into it. See higher resolution photos being pulled through. And of course, very sharp looking. And Twitter has said that the new version of the Twitter client also takes advantage of the retina display. You can see it running right here, multi-paned view. You can see my tweet here. Um, I had set up the new iPad without iTunes, since you don't need iTunes anymore to activate a device. But of course, once I finally did connect it to iTunes in order to put some music on, it messed up all the applications I had already installed on the device. Can show you some music, though, now that we've got it loaded up. You see everything still looks quite good. Same sound performance as the iPad 2 that this shares so much with. Um, that single speaker just it's not great for audio output, but it's not too bad either. and you have multiple views just as you always have. So that's my quick look at the new third generation Apple iPad. For MobileBurn.com, I'm Michael Oral. Thanks for watching.